The semantic functions are one of the things that got me sold on Tana. They're powerful because they allow you to build organizational structures or hierarchies from the bottom up and also easily retrieve and manage your data at different levels. Now, they're hidden in the advanced options of your field options, but I don't think you need to be intimidated by them. They're very powerful, and if you approach them in a systematic way, I think they're easily accessible. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how semantic functions work, and I'll show you a couple of examples where they are very useful in your own workspace. Now, we're going to start right at the beginning and we'll start very slowly with super tags and fields. So if you're familiar with Tana, you're probably familiar with super tags and fields, but I do think it's important just to lay down the foundations so that we can build systematically. So super tags define what a node is. So I like to think of this as specifying this thing goes into this database. And some of the examples that I've given there are tasks, projects, clients, that's the sort of thing that I would use super tags for. An example that I'm going to use here is universities. So if I control click this and open it up in the right, I've got a number of universities that I've entered into my workspace here. So I've used the super tag university and then enter the information in the node. So this is the node here and that's the node information. And then I say, I enter the super tag at the end there. Okay, so this is saying the University of California, Los Angeles is a university. Great. So that's our points of departure. Fields are where you define your relationships. And this is where I say the node has, it's in, or it belongs to this thing. So if I look at my example here of the University of California, it is in the city, Los Angeles. So I'm, uh, this is my field over here. And I'm saying it is in Los Angeles. And, and in the field, I specify the value. Another way of thinking about this is a key value pair. So what's the key and then what's the value? Okay, but that's getting a little bit into the weeds. Fields are how you build in additional data about your nodes. And it's also how you build up this bottom up organization. So I'm starting right at the bottom here. I'm not going to the city, Los Angeles and entering this University of California, Los Angeles or UCLA, whatever, underneath the city. I'm saying at the university level, I'm mapping it to the city, Los Angeles. So that is how you build bottom up. You start from the, the lowermost level and then you map it to a higher level. Another way to think of fields is as columns in your database or a spreadsheet, if that's what you're familiar with. So if I open up this to read list here, it just takes some time because it's a bit of a bigger node. This is a list of books. Now notice I've called it to read because it's my to read database. I could have also called it my books database, but I like the to read. So here is the node. This is the node that I'm talking about. So the, the book in a sense is on writing well. The author is a field and it's a column in my database. And, and this is because I'm using a view. So in your different nodes, you've got all these different views here, but I don't want to get too distracted. And I can and specify a bunch of different things related to this node. So if I scroll to the right here, I've got a rating and then who it was recommended by. So if you think about this, this syntax again, on writing well, has the author, William Zinzer, is in the genre writing and is recommended by, I guess you could say that is in, in or belongs to the recommendations of whatever. So that is your fields. Now, before we move on, I want to just quickly look at this last point here, which is it's important to distinguish between fields and super tags for yourself. So you'll notice that with all my super tags, well, I haven't gone through a lot of them, but I use the naming convention of, of lowercase to show it's super tag and then uppercase for fields. So the author, genre, um, rating, recommended by all have uppercase just so that I can recognize what is a field and what is a super tag. And it's important to say, this may seem trivial, but these things have different menus. So super tags have one menu and fields have another menu. And as I say, it sounds trivial, but when you get your, we start working, it might be difficult to find out, oh, where is the setting? So we're now going to talk about how you configure your fields. Part of the reason why I bring up the, these things have separate menus is because you can configure your fields when you add them. And so when I add a field there, I can choose what type of field it is. So on the right here, I've opened up my projects super tag from the Unlock Tana workspace. And I've got these three projects, projects A, B, and C. Okay, they're not sorted in alphabetical order there. 
and no need to get into this um the brackets over here that's other stuff but the thing that i want to do here is show that when i add a field i can say okay I got add new field there and i can say who the manager is of this project okay so there we go i'm now creating this manager field and you'll see that it's just got this little icon over there which is different to all of these other fields and that is where i go and click to access the field menu and at the moment the field type is just plain but if i click on there i can change it to options instance date number there's a whole bunch of different fields here so for manager i might choose a different user in my workspace but for this example i would say instance because this is what i'm wanting to show and now i need to choose the super tag or the database that i'm looking at for this field and the Database that I want to look at here is employee or something like that. Okay, there we go. So I have an employee. So it's saying that the manager of the project must be an instance of an employee in my workspace. Okay. Now, as I said, I would probably use a user, but for this example, let's just look at that. Now, as soon as I choose that field type is an instance of, if I navigate right to the bottom to my advanced options here, this is where I can turn on field has semantic function. So I just click that on. And the only function that I have right now is part of. There are apparently more in the pipeline, but for now, part of is good enough. Okay, and that is where the magic works. And we'll look at that in a different example here. I just want to speak to this instance of here. So you'll see here that status, if I just click on there, whoopsie, um, status is also an instance of. So if I click, control click to open up on the right, Status is an instance of status UT. Now I could have chosen this to be an option and I could define the options, but I find that defining super tags or defining things in my workspace, in that database of things and creating those maps is really powerful and a robust repeatable workflow that helps you to build very efficient structures in Tana. So you could use options, I really like using instance of, and yeah, it gives you a lot of power later down the line. When I choose instance of, it means that those nodes must be predefined in my workspace, or it will add them if they're not predefined with that super tag. Now I'm saying here, if you've ever used data validation in Excel, it's a similar concept, just better because Excel is not a database and this is a very much more robust way of doing it. So that's a lot of setup work to get to the point where we can discuss where this is actually useful. And in one sentence where it comes in especially handy is when you are trying to retrieve information and then manage information based on that. So it's really in the retrieval and being able to zoom out and see the information at every level. And David Allen talks about the 50,000 foot view versus the 10,000 foot view and getting things done. And this really enables you to go between those two things. So let's have a look at the university example before we look at how you can apply this in your own workspace. As I said, I've got all these universities and all of them have got a field city, which this, and with the city that they're in. And if I go to this field, so I'm just clicking over there, it's an instance of, which is important, instance of city. And then right at the bottom, it's got this field has semantic function part of. Note, you don't have to specify what it's part of. You're just saying that this field indicates that this is part of something greater. And if I go to my city over here, I can see that the state field, if I just click on there as well, also has this field has semantic function part of, and the state must also be an instance of. So these are important things. And then finally, if I just go to my states, I have this country field, which you also click there and just close these over here, is also a part of. So field has semantic function and it's part of. Okay, so that's the setup work that's required in order to get this. And just to visualize it, I have university is in city or is part of city, which is in state, which is in country. So this is basically concentric circles, or not necessarily concentric, but I can then go and see at every level which universities are in states, in countries, or even in cities, but that's really only the level up. And the way that I do that is using a recursive search. So when you use this field has semantic function part of, you enable a different functionality within your searches called components rec. So if I just start a search node, so question mark, create search node, 
what I want to find is universities. So those are all my universities. And I want to see which city they are part of or which bigger entity they are part of. Now, the field that's defined at the university level is city. So I use greater than sign and I'll open up city. And there we go. I choose that city. But now if I were to specify a country here, that wouldn't work because it doesn't recognize any city or any countries in the city field. But if I say greater than sign again to open up the field menu, this is just one of the intricacies of components rec. I'm not doing such a detailed tutorial of it. And if I say components rec, that's now available to me. And now I can say which country I want the university to be in. So let's just say at Canada. Canada. There we go. And now I just say done. And there we go. All of these universities, let's actually just view them as a table. University of Toronto, it's in Toronto. And the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. And these are in Canada. Now I could also do this at a state level. So let's go here and I want to say, instead of, I want to remove that and let's say at California, there we go. And then if I just say done, so there we go. UCLA, USC, all of these I can recognize by their cities are in California. So that lays the groundwork, but how is this actually useful in your own database? I think the cities and universities example just helps you like visualize things a little bit better. But now you really want to apply this in examples that are useful to you. I want to look at three things here. And the first is project management. So in your project management, you might have some sort of work breakdown structure, which looks something like this. Initiatives, projects, tasks, and subtasks. Now, you could theoretically go and build this top down. And that would look like doing an outline. So I indent that underneath that. I indent that underneath that. And I indent that underneath that. So that breaks down that hierarchy in the tree-like structure. But what I really want to do is be able to map from the bottom up. So at a subtasks level, I would want to have a field tasks that could map to my tasks. And then at task level, I want to have a field projects that maps to a project. And similarly, at the project level, I want to have a field initiative that maps to an initiative. So there's the same visualization. Subtasks are part of tasks, which are part of projects, which are part of initiatives. And then looking at that concentric circle again, I could go and look at any subtasks or tasks outstanding at any of these different levels. So maybe on some initiative, I see, oh, what do, what do I have outstanding? I can go and I can query components recursive and find all the tasks that are outstanding for that initiative. Similarly, on organizational level, maybe for your own organization or if you're working in a sales department, you can have your company, departments, teams, employees. If you're in a sales organization and you're using a CRM, maybe that would be your contacts. And then you could refine the people that you want to retrieve based on this higher level circles. I'm not going to go back and look at the circles. The final example that I want to look at is software development. So depending on what work breakdown structure your team is, you could have epics, stories, features, bugs, anything really. And maybe you want to find a bug which is related to a feature. Okay, in this example, that's just the one level above, but maybe in your work breakdown structure, there's a few levels in between. And if you're using Jira, it has to be mapped linearly to that. And how do you actually retrieve that information? I'm sure there's many ways of doing this and you might have a tagging system, whatever, but in Tana, you can use the semantics functions part of to retrieve that lower down information based on the circle that you want to find it in. Now, I quickly want to identify a challenger and how I address that. So if I wanted to build this as part of tasks, as part of projects, whatever, I have to go and define that at every level. And potentially I have projects, which are these uh, defined timelines or I have areas of ongoing responsibility. So tasks might map into projects or they might map into areas. So there's like an indirect relationship here. It's not clear which one I need to map to. So then I would need an areas field and a projects field in all my tasks. And really this can become quite cumbersome. So the way that I get around this is by having one field. I've spoken about this before in another video, which I'll link to, but basically it's this relates to field over here and the relates to field is an instance of relationship. Now, if I go to my, my work breakdown structure, this relationship super tag over here is inherited at every level within my workspace. So this means that I only need to define one field has semantic function part of, and that is this relationship. 
and this is built in recursively. So it becomes very easy to just map the information without having to go and build all these additional fields. So this removes a lot of burden when you are trying to set up your workspace. Now I go through this in detail in the course. It's like this recursive repeatable structure, which I believe strongly in building. And this is also in the Tana for project management template. And, you know, just speaking to more practical example in universities and cities, if I look at this mining co full potential levers initiative, I've got all related work units and outstanding tasks. So if I go here and I click there, I've also grouped this by what the thing is related to. So now it's showing me, and that's just using that group function there. I'm, I'm glossing over a lot of things because it's not a detailed tutorial of all these aspects, but it breaks down all the different components of my work. And that's really the beauty of using semantic functions with the components recursive search. It helps you to structure your work in such a way that you can find what it is that you want very easily by understanding the concentric circle that it becomes a part of. So I've covered a lot of this in this video, but if you're wanting to have a little bit more detail and you know, go through the whole structured approach of how to get started in Tana and build this recursive, repeatable workflows, have a look at the Unlock Tana course, which is now available, or you can also have a look at the Tana for project management template. Maybe that's your style. Maybe you don't like courses. Either way, this is available to you. I've also got a video on that on my other channel, which I try and release a few more like lower friction content. And I've also got a few videos that are related to Tana on that other channel. So go have a look at that. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments and yeah, see you around in the next video.